Yeah, um, good afternoon. Yeah, good afternoon to members of the media. Once again, uh, I'd like to thank you for exercising uh, extreme patience uh, and accommodating us in, a, in our busy schedule at the moment. Let me start by uh, saying, yeah, we anticipate a very difficult second leg against a very good team. Um, that we 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 worked very very hard and and got a hard end of victory against in in Angola. Mama Luli Sanans, I think, was the fifth time we visited uh, we visited Angola, and was for the first time we came back with uh, with a win. So extremely extremely proud of the players for for their performance, for their fighting spirit, for their brotherhood and the unity they they showed throughout the match. And uh, fortunately, we we got a good result and, and now we prepare for the second leg. Thank you, coach. Uh, Debs, are just from a player's perspective, a 2-0 advantage. How do you approach such a fixture? No, of course, uh, Coach spoke to us before the game and he said uh, usually when we do well, it's, it's when we win the away fixture. So I think we did what we did the first part well and we have to finish the job tomorrow and which is going to be a tough game. So yeah, man, we're looking forward to the game. Members of the media will take five questions. Uh, we'll start with yourself here in the front, if you could just identify yourself as well as the publication you represent. Can we have the mic, please? <coughs> Good afternoon, Coach Karawa. Sure, Good sport. Uh, coach. <laughs> ah, coach. It's a great start. No, you're saying I'm good. Luck, coach. No, welcome, welcome. All right, all right. Uh, uh, coach, I mean, your, your the first leg up against uh, Petro, you did well, as as you correctly said, you know, winning the game 2 0. Uh, but I just want to give you a bit of reference. Maybe I might be a bit longer. Uh, when when the goalkeeper comes in, Ronan Williams does extremely well. I had an opportunity to watch the game twice. He was absolutely brilliant. You've got a lender now who looks like he's got a natural unfair talent amongst his peers because he's most gifted. Uh, Temba Zwani, defying science, logic, and all mm. of that. Do you do you, are they important to that level that you know without them you know the squad looks different and do you think are you over reliant on such players as well as slaves are here because I mean it's a totally totally different sundowns when those players are in the squad. I have to be very careful how I answer this question. <clears throat> um, because. I love all my players. I've got big respect for all 36 of them. I think uh, we are also extremely blessed to have the squad that we have. The facts do remain and I'm, and I'm still a little bit uneasy about the unfairness of having to play a f cup fixture without six, seven Bafana internationals who play the day before and we are asked to play the following day. <clears throat> you ask me about these players, I say to you, you're asking me about uh, Temba Zwane, I mean, probably the most consistent player for the last 10 years in South African football. You ask me about Tewoko Mukwena, you're asking me about the reigning football of the season. And so, the facts remain that their quality, of course, shows when they are on the pitch. And for sure, even though uh, we've got a very talented squad and we give opportunities, and I'm very, very proud of how each and every single player has gone about the business in terms of rotations and when given an opportunity. But for sure, when uh, the the absence of some of our players, and even now, we are in a space where we are we are playing without any of our our strikers. We mixed results.
fell unbeaten within 90 minutes, 120 minutes. It's taken penalties to beat us, uh, but we are still playing games without Peter Shalulile, Lucas Ribeiro, uh, Lisibon Nku uh, has just come back, Tapelo Morena is out, Lebo came back and is now also a bit of a doubt. We are playing games without Sipombule. People don't know since own cause. You, if you want to know how important Sipo is, watch the game against Pirates at, at Orlando. Watch uh, our game against Wida uh, last season in Morocco. But we are going on with that business and uh, the players that have been given the responsibility have done exceptionally well. Pizzo has been unbelievable. Musa, when we've called upon him, has been incredible. Uh, I can go on, even Mendieta now is stabilizing and trying to understand a little bit of how we want to play. And uh, um, Obri Mudiba now also, when we've given him an opportunity, a very consistent performance in the team. So there's two sides to the coin in relation to that. The one is, of course, uh, a, a very deep sense of gratitude and appreciation towards the players for their humility, their selflessness, and, and, and always giving their best when, when called upon. And there's a great sense of appreciation for that. And that must be made very, very clear. But also, too, is for sure the quality that you talk about is quality that when you don't have the goalkeeper of the year, you don't have the midfielder of the year, who so happens to be the footballer of the year, you don't have uh, probably the best player or one of the best players in South African football in Tembazwane. You don't have the, the the top goal scorer. You don't have the defender of the year, of course. Or the absence will be felt. And uh, do that to Man City. Take Haaland out of Man City and see what happens. You, you've just uh, taken Benzema out of Real Madrid and you, you can check the results of Real Madrid. So Kevin De Bruyne is out at Man City and you can see out of Carabao Cup first time losing first time having the lowest XG in in 3-4 games Arsenal, Newcastle it's very difficult So and that's football football is uh, uh, I always say to you there's ceiling raises and there's floor raises and when you have players that are that make the team better they make their teammates better. Of course, their absence will be felt. Good. Uh, from Hi, My question, Coach, I mean, there's a school of thought that believes that Sundown's uh, heavy workload uh, schedule, I mean, there's another continental competition, is an advantage to DSTV Premiership team while trying to catch up. Uh, what do you think of that, especially in a season that also has the Afcon, which means the second round is going to be cramped. And the second part of the question is, how has Sundowns managed to be as dominant as it has been, despite continuously competing in the Champions League and, and having this this workload? Well, I want to thank you for for exposing the truth because there's a school of thought also that is contrary to the feelings that we are dominant and we are playing well and we are winning games and. We've come under a lot of criticism. I've suffered uh, greatly, but um, like the players, and maybe also maybe the far less than some members of the football club for the last three, four weeks. Mm, but uh, I give, uh, like I always say in my press conferences, I give a lot of praise and credit to the players. They work hard. They they understand that to be a top football player, you have to to be a top football player for for 40, 50, maybe even now 60 games with this extra competition. And that's what is happening worldwide, you know. That's why the top coaches in the world now are, are, are saying it's too much football. It's too much football because when you look at the things, when you have to start to play too many games, of course there's fatigue and the accumulation thereof. There's uh, less training time, so I spend far too little time with the players on the training pitch because it's always rest and recovery. 
and there's so much work that we have to do in terms of trying to improve the players. There's also the unfortunate uh, science uh, from, a, from a physiological perspective that speaks about the lack of the lack of consistency that is derived from an accumulation of of both not just physiological and, and, and physical fatigue but also psychological fatigue. And then you talk about these players that are important for the club, that also are important for the national team. But heavy is the head that carries the crown and if you want to be a top football player in the modern game, You've got to be a player that's able to use your day offs very, very well. You've got to have a very good social life. You've got to look after your diet and, 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 and the company you keep. Because uh, part to your responsibility is not just to look after your talent, but to manage your career. And that is uh, in the space that we operate in. We've got players that, that clearly understand that responsibility. Coach uh, Delmain from Sokola Duma. Hi, Delmain. Coach, I want to ask you, uh, in the first leg, did sure. run one massive in the first half, saves the penalty, sure. saves the follow-up. There's Alende who scores the goal. Sure. But I want to focus a bit on Maseko because he's come in since he's been signed, obviously trying to adapt to the way you play. Not every player can come in and, and sure. do that. But we saw how effective he could be in games like that. I mean, the goal was testament to that. Is that perhaps almost justification on why he was brought in? Is that the reason why he was brought in? Because I think he's still adapting to the more you guys trying to play out where you aren't pressed as I, but when you play against teams like Petro, they tend to press you a bit higher, leaving a bit more space. So I just want to um, gauge uh, you're thinking more behind that. Uh, it's a it's a fantastic question, and I like your question based on the individual. I try not to speak too much about the individuals. I think you guys know mainly because uh, football is a team sport, and and the success and the performances, maybe even the failures of individual footballers and and coaches alike are dependent heavily on the contribution of the collective. Uh, but the players you've mentioned, of course, Marcelo, there's a, including Debza. Every day there's corrections, every day there's a phone call that comes in and that says, are you watching this? Are you are you aware of this? Are you, are you checking that? Are you check? Uh, the season starts already. I had uh, uh, some improvements for each and every single player that there are certain measurables and certain aspects of their games that I felt they've, they've, they have to improve this season. And part of Marcelo Allendez was uh, the final third contribution with goals and assists and in the last two, two games, maybe three games. Is, there's been three goal contributions with an assistant and two goals and it makes me very proud of him and, and his ability to be coachable and to be humble enough to accept the ability or the information or the, the responsibility that he has to improve. The same can be said about Maseko. Sometimes you forget Maseko is only 19 years old. I spend a lot of time on the training pitch with Maseko. I spend a lot of time in the video room with Maseko, like I do with all the players. And we have to exercise caution with the young players because they need they need a lot of coaching. It's the same with Mabena. Uh, it's the same with uh, Tando and Tando. These kids, they have got incredible potential, but they need, they need training time. The good thing for them is that they've got a lot of time and God has blessed them with uh, a lot more time in their careers to be able to shine and show their talents a little bit later. But for sure there's still quite a lot of work to be done from a coaching perspective to try to improve them. Um, we, we spoke of high pressing and, and, and what happens in, in, in some of the games, but I think sometimes the, the big mistake we make 
especially in South African football, maybe in football in global. I was reading something that uh, Jose Mourinho was saying, in fact, even Pep Guardiola said it in his press conference. And sometimes people question the tactics, but the people don't know the tactics. People don't. I talk. If I ask you guys what were the tactics of the first half, you wouldn't tell me. And if I say to you that Petro didn't press us in the first half and in the second half, you guys w would disagree with me. But I've got footage to show that we've had more aggressive teams pressing us than than what we experienced with Petro. We had other issues at Petro in Angola, and they were tactical. The players know them. I know them. But we have people, and maybe even the, just the general public, sometimes being so quick to speak on tactics, and yet, and yet, you have to know what is in my head. You have to know what is in my mind. The preparation on the piece of paper, the discussions we have with the technical team, the information I give to the players, the information the video analysts give to the players. You have to know. You have to know the opposition. You have to watch the games. I watch four or five games of every opponent we play, even when there's two days in between. And 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 I I sometimes get the feeling that there are people that think they've watched more games of the opponent than I have. And that is not true. You've got to know what is happening with the opposition. You've got to know what is well, happening with the tactics for you to be able to have an opinion on the tactics and on the opposition. And. Uh, Sometimes you make that mistake and there were of course some tactical adaptations we had to make at half time but we did and as I said big compliments to the players because uh, the game of football belongs to them. We'll squeeze in the last two questions, colleagues, and I hope you will be for Tebza. Yeah, we are out of time, so can I just ask that we squeeze in Tebza here because he's also joining Yeah, us. I want to ask the coach, uh, I can also ask for Tebza, no problem. Okay, I'll ask the coach. Okay. But allow there be two questions. He's, he's a consistent. <laughs> we are press for it. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Um, coach, I just want to come on this uh, competition. Um, a lot has been said about it, um, good or bad. But from your experience, um, you've played in the Champions League, um, you've been part of uh, the Club World Cup and all those spaces. What are you? How are you finding it? Um, your experience, at least now, you've travelled to Angola. You've been part of this. Um, in a, in a terms of strength to strength and just the organisation around it. So good question. Because last night I spent uh, I spent I spent most of the night catching up on the games. I checked Al Akli and Simba, and I thought it was an exceptional game. I thought the level was very high. I watched Wida, then I caught up with that. I watched Esperance struggle. It's, it's difficult. Uh, so Inyumba putting on an unbelievable performance. Uh, I, I saw a very physical and hard running TP Mazembe. Um, and so, of course, when when you go into a competition like this, where it's called, it's not called the African Football League in that sense from having only a select few and when it is the select few it means it's the highest or the best on the continent and therefore the standard is very very high and that's from the football perspective I saw some very good matches and I saw some and that's why there was very little chances in all the games and you needed a penalty and you needed a corner kick to settle some of the games, so set pieces become so important when there's very little chances in open play, and that is only normal when 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 the level when the level is so close to each other and 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 the margin of error is so little. It's only normal in football matches. It's the same when we played Al Akhli, for an example. We only created five chances and we scored all five against Petro. The, our first shot on target was a goal with Marcelo Allende. This, this is what happens sometimes in football. From from a football perspective, I think the level has been very, very high and I think the teams are very, very good. And, and, and from what I watched last night and catching up with all the games, 
I I'm not surprised because of course it's uh, it's the select few and the highest select few and, and probably mostly the highest ranked in, in on the continent from an organizational perspective and from the tournament perspective I've spoken and I've said already one very important thing is that a big 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 credit needs to go to the CAF leadership and in particular the president uh, Dr. Patrice Mutsebe for this initiative and, and this brainchild because it's got a lot of medium to long term benefits not only in terms of placing African football with the rest of the world from a global perspective but also from a monetary perspective that commercially the teams become a little bit more viable and sustainable and there's even greater benefits for 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 the youth and and the member associations get to benefit greatly in terms of developing youth structures within the countries that may have been previously disadvantaged and so uh, when there's progress with african football you've got to take your head off and give and give the plaudits and the kudos to 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 the people behind it and 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 uh, the CAF leadership board, the, the, the executive in that space and in particular Dr. Patrice Mutsipe deserve a lot of lot of praise and credit for for this um, for this tournament and the branch out and, and and the ideas behind it. Coach we'll take one last question for Tibza. Sure, thanks Tama. Uh Mawera. <laughs> um, oh, when you when you when you send for sundowns um, obviously you have to be sold to a particular project in terms of like the level that you'll be playing at and I mean you your your, your own profile as a player I mean you've won young player of the year you've won midfield of the year now football of the year are you where you are now uh, are you now sold on on, on on the project that you were sold like to come to Mamelodi Sundance and the level that you're gonna get and maybe just to squeeze the last one there like um, last season when um, you played the Champions League um, the stadium was always full, but towards the end, like in the second, in the semi-final, um, the the level that that was expected on the stands was not to the the level that it was. Um, what message do you have for the, for the Euro Nation in terms of like encouragement for them to come to the stadium and to come in, even though it's free entrance, but not to come because it's free and just wear yellow, but to also sing and push you guys. Yeah, man. Uh, let me start with the question of uh, the Champions League. Uh, I think last year, I think yeah, last year when we played with the second leg, I think what the fans let us down is uh, they couldn't sing the whole game. And for us, when we play away games, we can't even even hear our voices in the field because the fans are singing the whole game. They are booing us, but where else when they come here at home? Our fans are just quiet, and that is what is letting us down as South Africans. And also, the pro- about the project, uh, I'll say I'm sold because when I look back, because usually I usually look back and check where I come from and the way I used to play, and right now uh, I'm miles ahead. I'm definitely miles ahead, and also my mentality has changed a lot. And when you arrive at this environment, your mentality changes. Uh, you have to change the way of life, mm, the way you treat people. And, and fun, fun, funny enough, uh, when I got here, uh, I used to greet everyone sitting down. So, but when you get here, if, it doesn't matter who you're greeting. You can either be a child, you ever must stand up. That's the culture of the team. So that's how we are taught here. So it's one of the things that I'm saying, like uh, I was told when I got here and uh, and also, yeah, man, I'm, I'm enjoying my football, honestly, I'm enjoying my football. It's been tough and it will always be tough because the competition is very tough and that is what is making us to always improve and to keep on winning and winning and winning and winning because we want to get better every time and and I'm not happy as yet because when I when I signed, I promised the chairman that we're gonna win Champions League. So, yeah, we're still working on it. So, yeah.
Thanks, Tibza. Uh, Coach Tibza, thank you very much for your time. We wish you all the best tomorrow. Thanks, Tabo. Uh,